Welcome once again to Forecast Lab, the program for those who want just a little bit extra. If you prefer the fancy graphics, well, there's other channels on YouTube for that. But here we use actual graphics used by weather service forecasters. This is the AWIPS system. That system is used at 122 weather offices around the country. And we use some other graphics as well. For today, this is starting to become a broken record. I feel like every time I do this weather cast, there's a big system going through California. And no exception today. Center of the low pressure area at this time, this evening, is right there over the Mojave Desert. And you should be able to pick out where the strongest jet stream energy is. Right in here. You can see the packing of the height contours as strongest right there near the jet. And on the left side, in other words, to the north, some very high vorticity values. This map just came in today showing the seasonal snowfall totals for this winter. Some high amounts up there in Minnesota, Wisconsin, up over four feet. And you can see right there around Buffalo, some of that lake effect snow gave them about 10 feet for the season. And the Sierra Nevadas, they've had a brutal winter and some totals. You can see that blue color right there. That's indicating 40 feet of snow for the season. This afternoon, though, the warm air is surging north, 80 degrees around Huntington, West Virginia, and lots of 70s up into Ohio. Further to the southwest, 82 degrees at Louisville at this hour, and we pick up mostly 70s down further south. We are looking at the possibility of a slight change in the pattern. This is the annular mode index, which is basically the same as the Arctic Oscillation. And for the past couple weeks, we've had this positive annular mode index, and that indicates a very strong polar vortex, which actually locks the temperate latitudes out of much of that Arctic air. But there is going to be a shift you can see up here at the top. This is up at about 20 or 30 miles in the atmosphere. That is the sudden stratospheric warming we've had during the month of February, that orange color right there. And you can see it appears to be descending down to the ground. Now, this is probably not like a physical descent, but it's more like a coupling of the lower atmosphere, and that could allow some of that cold air to move down into the U.S. But you can see those negative values are not really all that high. And that's looking ahead for the next week to week and a half. Let's take a look at that surface map for this afternoon. Of course, the strong southwest system dominates the weather map. That's it right there, 1002 millibar low, just north of Las Vegas, out around Area 51 there. South of that, an occlusion, a triple point southwest of Kingman, and a cold front extending down through Yuma into Baja, California. Ahead of that, you can see the temperatures are in the 50s and 60s. Quite warm there at Tucson and the low dew points, looking at about 12 degrees there at El Paso, 28 at Tucson. So that is some dry air right there. So the precipitation should initially start as Virga, but with the strong forcing coming in, the strong jet, it will be a rapid conversion to some nasty weather. So this afternoon, we're gonna see that cold front moving through Arizona, and then at some point tonight or tomorrow, it will get into New Mexico. We'll take a look at the model charts for that. Further to the east there, a dry line starting to get set up there in Texas, a triple point around Fort Stockton, a little bit east of there, dividing these teens and 20s dew points from the 60s out there in east and south Texas. That's rich moisture, and we've even got 70s flowing in through Corpus Christi. So that's helping to prime the atmosphere for a possible severe weather event tomorrow. However, today, there's enough lift along this cold front, enough moisture, and enough instability to support some thunderstorms in northern and central Arkansas. In the eastern part of the U.S., there's another frontal wave right there helping to infect some of that warm air into the Ohio River Valley. And we've got a bit of cold air damming. You can see, even though we've got 
80 degrees right there around Huntington on the other side of the Appalachians, only 50s and 60s. And it does take a little bit of energy to dislodge a lot of this cold air in place. That is a very common pattern. And some of the earlier models, like the Ada, were developed to try to cope with that pattern. Fortunately, the models that we have now are a little bit better at handling that type of pattern. So we're going to see this wave moving into the northeastern U.S., eventually dragging in that warm air and then replaced by some of this cold air flowing through the Corn Belt. And some of that air up there is quite cold. In the northern Dakota, snow coming down, some more travel problems through Minneapolis up to Duluth, and they're expecting about two to four inches of additional snow up around Duluth and the UP of Michigan. And working our way up into the Pacific Northwest, a strong Pacific system making its way into southeastern Alaska. There is some heavy snow coming down at Juneau, which is located right here. And you can see that's right there in that strong warm air advection zone. And if you're used to seeing these low level jets and strong warm air advection, you'll know that that is pretty close to the warm front and close to the surface system right there. So we're going to expect that to be funneling up kind of like that. And that puts Juno right there in the nose of that strong, warm and moist advection area. And that's a look at one of the webcams there, quite a bit of snow there. And those look like large wet flakes. And there are some more pictures from the webcams. You can see liquid on the outside of the window, those temperatures hovering very close to freezing. And what's happening there is usually the islands along southeastern Alaska, they're under the influence of the Pacific. But with that deep system right there, 960 millibar low, pulling the air westward, that tends to erode a lot of that warm air, and it replaces it with some of the colder air from the interior. Not much of it, 32 degrees. If we had a lot of high pressure in the interior regions, we would see more of a canyon wind type event and much colder temperatures. And they had that, I think, back in December, some extremely cold weather. Anyway, let's head up north into Alaska. Looks very typical for this time of year. Kind of stormy out in western Alaska. Some strong winds gusting to 41 there at Tin City. And temperatures well below minus 10 to minus 20 up near the North Slope. In northern Canada, remaining quite cold. Lots of minus 30s. The coldest temperature appears to be right there. I think that is Arctic Bay. And temperatures this February have been below average throughout this entire area. South of there, temperatures have been above average. And Rankin Inlet, which is on the western Hudson Bay coast, they had their coldest February ever, about 10 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. And you may remember a couple of weeks ago, we saw minus 60 maybe a little bit colder than that. What was it, minus 62 or something like that, up there at Hall Beach. There's the water vapor imagery for this afternoon, a classic comma cloud. That's it right there. The main Bear Clinic zone around Las Vegas, Kingman, Cedar City. And on the backside, a dirty dry slot working into the Mojave Deserts. Still a lot of convection on that backside due to ample moisture and quite a bit of instability. We switch over to the visible satellite imagery and look at the details. Definitely a convective structure arcing around towards the Nellis Range back to Tonopah. So that's going to be a snow area. And here's the dry slot. Las Vegas located right there. And if you look to the west and to the north, the mountains are covered with quite a bit of new snow. That's Mount Charleston and Red Rock, which we're going to look at very shortly here. And up to the north, the Sheep Mountains. Usually they don't get too much snow, but they've definitely got it this afternoon. Other areas of the Mojave Desert clearing out. Some snow in the mountains north of Los Angeles. Can't really see that at this time. I can maybe pick out a few breaks there. And the Sierra Nevadas, yeah, they are covered and they are clearing out. The San Joaquin Valley looking pretty good at this hour but temperatures will be falling to 
right near or below freezing tonight. Some parts of the Sierra Nevadas were getting snow this afternoon. Other parts getting some sunshine. And that's a look a little bit further to the east around Kingman, about halfway to Hoover Dam. Yeah, they've got quite a bit of snow cover there. And that's a look at Red Rock, just west of Las Vegas, and they've got quite a bit of snow. Very scenic there. And you probably noticed some of that blue sky through the breaks. Yeah, there's some strong subsidence in the upper levels. The tropopause descending down to low levels with that strong cold air advection. And that black color there, that's associated with a tropopause at 500 to 600 millibars. In other words, about 15 to 18,000 feet. So the stratosphere descending almost to mountaintop level. That's it right there across Los Angeles, and that will spread into Arizona overnight. And that does not really correspond to the worst weather. You can have some steep lapse rates in there, so if there's residual moisture, you can get some cold core convection around there. But the strongest dynamic lift is out ahead of that, pretty much where I've drawn that mark right there. All right, so you all want to know what the weather's going to do. This is a NAM forecast. California located here, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and the Pacific. So what we've got here is the main comet cloud, pretty much as you saw there on the satellite. Also some strong onshore flow with some significant moisture producing rain from OC down to San Diego and down into Baja, California. So we're gonna see that spread eastward as we roll this forward all those dynamics pouring into Arizona. Looks like a little broken line of convection approaching Phoenix. Just after dark, I'm kind of doubtful there's going to be lightning or anything like that in there. As we saw, the dew points only about 20 to 30 degrees, but there could be some strong mid-level forcing, so certainly some showers with that. All right, so that's going to move into Tucson around midnight. Also some strong lift in the Mogollon Rim area. You can see that southerly flow, and that's going to be upslope flow. So some orographic lift with that. Things will shift into New Mexico for tomorrow. That's going to be about daybreak. And I should point out those orange colors that you see right here. That Those are going to be high winds. And we're going to see those really come to life tomorrow as the system exits the Rockies. So we're up to lunchtime tomorrow. You can see things are getting busy out here. Lots of lines, the vectors starting to elongate, and that's that lee side cyclogenesis starting to take place in West Texas. And I've got a different sector for that. So let's head to that. All right, so here we are. We've got Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Old Mexico, and you can see the dates right there. So this is starting out tomorrow morning. So initially not much going on, but as we get the heating, the system exiting the Rockies, we see the wind field really start to pick up around Guadalupe Peak, Marfa, and that red color, that's gonna be winds gusting to about 40 to 50 miles an hour. So we're up to lunchtime. Strong winds probably kicking up dust. Maybe another dust storm from Lubbock down to Midland and that all pushes to the east. And as we get the heating start to take place, the warm air advection, the moisture, all that comes together, and we start getting thunderstorms developing around DFW down to about Stephenville and up to Ardmore. So we're up to 6 p.m. Thunderstorms moving through DFW, through the I-35 and I-45 corridor, and into East Texas rather quickly. So that's going to be midnight. So we're looking at a overnight squall line tomorrow evening, mostly after midnight in the southern Mississippi River Valley. So that's going to be about 3 in the morning, and there's 6 a.m. And by that time, it starts to look fairly forced. So this is all Pacific air flowing in the backside, some Canadian air working down south, and very windy across Oklahoma, blustery for Friday morning around Tulsa up to Chanute. 
and looks like a windy, mild day for Friday. This is going to be 3 p.m. You can see the values there, 293 Kelvin across Dallas. You subtract 273, that gives you 20, which is 20 degrees Celsius. So you do have to convert that for elevation, but that does put you in the ballpark of 60s temperatures. So not very much cold air coming down from the north. Most of that is focused on Arkansas and Missouri. The air out here, fairly mild. SPC for today, looking at enhanced risk there in Arkansas. However, unfortunately for tomorrow, a moderate risk across much of northeast Texas and the Arklatex. And I think a good way to evaluate that is to go to pivotal weather. And I'm starting out here with the theta E. This is the it's basically a combination of temperature and moisture with some emphasis on the moisture there. So certainly the richest air located around San Antonio at the current time. Not so much up there in Arkansas, so that's why they're only carrying an enhanced risk at SPC. So let's go forward overnight. Looks like a few storms popping up there in the hill country. I think I lost that there. Yeah. So that's going to be around Fredericksburg, Johnson City, later this evening. And then as we go into tonight, some modest values of moisture rebuilds and we get that southeast flow for the day tomorrow so that's going to be the surface cyclone right there the front moving in and thunderstorm development anywhere ahead of both of those features so that's going to be about dinner time and what we can do is we can set a skew t ahead of this convection to sample the environment so that that's going to be along interstate 45 and what we see here is some strong shear definitely got curvature on that hodograph and a classic loaded gun sounding with steep lapse rates just above the capping inversion. So certainly some significant factors here for severe weather. If we look a little bit further to the north, north of Tyler, the winds are a little bit more backed in that area. It looks like the cap is a little bit higher as well. Then we go into the evening hours. You can see a little blob of moisture making its way up there into Shreveport and towards Texarkana around midnight. We sample that environment and not so much of a cap there, but man, there's some strong shear, zero through one kilometer, looking at about 40 to 50 knots of shear between those two levels. And that does put it in that tyrannic category. And that strengthening is due to a low-level jet. Let's start out tomorrow morning. Some modest winds up to 20 to 30 knots. And then as that system approaches from the Rockies, we see the winds picking up. This stuff here, this is cold air advection. That's the Pacific air mass. So that'll be associated with some of the dust and high winds around Midland and into the hill country but the stuff that supports the severe weather is going to be out in this region. So this is going to be about dinner time, 9 p.m. You can see the winds at 850 millibars, 5,000 feet picking up to 50 to 60 knots. And it strengthens at nighttime. You can see that area of 60 knots expanding across the lower Mississippi River Valley. And then by 3 a.m., widespread 60 knot winds throughout much of Mississippi and into Alabama. So the severe risk will probably continue somewhat going into Friday morning. And that's all I got for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our new supporter, JWGO, and many thanks to our existing supporters, people like Nathan Bergeron, Patrice Brown, Philip Haley, Christopher Jacobs, Meat Puppet, Mr. P, Jamie Singleton, Robert Vermillion, thank you all very much for your support. I very much appreciate that. We'll see you back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.